already. If you get the book, Origin and Evolution of Primitive Man, written by Albert Churchward, he states, From here, these little men spread all over the world, north, east, south, and west. In other words, the pygmies, as they are called, in particular, the Twa, the Anu people, were not only in Africa, but in Europe, Asia, North and South America, and Oceania, which are the Pacific Islands, were populated by them. Was was populated originally by all of them. So North and South America, they were there. Europe, Asia, which actually there is no such thing as Europe because that's Asia Minor, Asia Major, Asia Minor. They was there. Oceania, the Pacific Islands, they was there. He was the first, the little red man of the earth. From the pygmy, evolution continued progressively in the following order. From them came the Bushmen. Two, the Masaba Negro. Three, the Nairotic Negro. Four, Maasai from Kenya. And five, Mongoloids which actually extended from the Bushmen. Fahim, the Thompson LP. You got to tell you what story is. I'll tell you what story is. The Mongolian, the Mongoloids, and then the so-called Aryanists. The so-called Aryanists. Now, so there's a common commonly held the belief that the human life evolved out of Africa millions of years ago. Many indigenous African tribes are direct descendants, some of the earliest modern human homo sapien groups, and have unique DNA markers. These tribes also have unique genetic features, such um, as well as languages that are not closely related to any other that exists today. Additionally, these tribes have been able to maintain their cultural traditions for thousands of years despite European colonization in nearby regions. Remarkably, all of the tribes on this list are still around and practice their ancient traditions. So you go to Wikimedia Commons and look up African Pygmies are widely known around the world for their small statue and are not one tribe but various smaller tribes that live in Central Africa like the other older African tribes on this list the Pygmies are thought to be descended from some of the earliest groups of humans as we know, some dating back to more than 30 million years ago, according to W. Raymond Drake in his book. Several current pygmy tribes have DNA markers closely related to one of the oldest groups of human ancestors. Okay. The San tribe, that's Khoisan, have been living in southern Africa for at least 30,000 years, of course more, and they are believed to be not only the oldest African tribe, but quite possibly the world's most ancient race. The San has the most diverse and distinct DNA than any other indigenous African group. This means that the sun are direct descendants of one of the original 
ancestral human groups. This is the way that is broken down. All right, so. I'm sorry about that. Um, we went ahead. Got to get back to where I was. All right, so. All right, so right here. This is the book by W. Raymond Drake, Gods and Spacemen in the Ancient West. We talked about this before, but now we're going to put it in perspective. Raymond Drake. He stated that the pygmies inhabited Earth for 30 million years. Pygmy is a term used for the various ethnic groups worldwide whose average height is usually unusually low. Anthropologists define pygmy as any group whose adult men grow to less than 150 centimeters, 4 feet 11 inches. In average height, a member of a slightly taller group is termed pygmyoid. The best known pygmies are the Aka, Ife, and Bunti of Central Africa. There are also pygmies in Australia, Thailand, Malaysia, Indonesia, the Philippines, Papua New Guinea, and Brazil. The term also includes the Negrito of Southeast Asia, the remains of at least 25 miniature humans who lived between 1,000 and 3,000 years ago, was found on the island of Palo in Micronesia. Of course, um, it goes much further back than that. But as you see here, Raymond Drake states that the pygmies inhabited Earth for 30 million years. So this 1,000 to 3,000 years ago is probably just one of the last impacts. Because as we've seen from the previous documentation by Albert Churchward, they spread it throughout North America, South America, Africa, Asia, and Europe. We know they was here in this Western Hemisphere because, and that they all refer to about at least 30 million years ago because, and this is where Raymond Drake got his information from, because there's a 28 million year old human skeleton that was found in the British, which was in the British Museum. Now it's in the basement of the British Museum from the Caribbean islands of Guadalupe. All right, Guadalupe. It says a 28 million year old human skeleton found in extremely hard 28 million year old limestone on the coast of French Caribbean island of Guadalupe in 1812. So, they dismissed this because this messed up the whole timeline of what they're trying to do. So they hid these sacks. And here it says, belonging to a woman about five feet two inches tall. So she would be related to the pygmyoid group, which is slightly taller than the pygmies, which is 411. The fully human Guadalupe woman skeleton is completely in, is complete in every respect except the feet and head are missing. It is an authentic discovery, which has been in the British Museum for over half a century. 
But because it doesn't fit the timeline, they had to put it in the basement. And when my wife and I went to the British Museum back in 2000 and 12, I believe it was 2012. Actually, it was before that. 2000, excuse me, 2008, October 2008, the last week, um, if, I'm, if I'm, I'm not mistaken, um, it was the last week um, going towards the Halloween. October. So it says, when the two-ton limestone block containing Guadalupe woman was first put on exhibit in the British Museum in 1812, it was first displayed as a proof of the Genesis flood. In 1881, however, what happened? The exhibit was quietly taken down to the basement and remain there to to this day. So as I was stating, when we went there, my wife and I went to the British Museum in 2008, the week of October of the Halloween um, festivities. <laughs> All right, and I'm being facetious. Um, we asked the curator of the museum, can we go down into the basement? He said the head, the head curator was not there that weekend, or that week. Um, however, if he was, he would petition for us to go. Um, he said, however, what he can tell us is that this is only 20% in which that we're seeing that is above. And the basement is 80% more of the artifacts. This is one of them in which that has been quietly taken down to the basement and remains there to this day. All right? Now, right here says, the recent epoch of geology begins. Ice age ends. Human beings spread to all parts of the world. And this is 20 million years ago. Who is this? Once again, the pygmies and the pygmyoids, known as the Twa people, the Anu people. The Tassetians, as they are also referred to as in ancient Kemet, Temeri, Temeray, Egypt. Okay? Now, so when we read here within the origin and evolution of primitive man by Albert Churchward that these little red men, as it was called, copper colored skin tone beings that not only were they in Africa but in Europe, Asia, North and South America and Oceania, this proves that the Negroids, the Twa people, the Anu people, were already in North America. Does it not? So, when you look here, I went to gedmatch.com. G-E-D-M-A-T-C-H dot com. There it says, if I went to the Ethio Helix K-10 African only, it speaks of the fact of my relationship to the Kong people in the Nile or Nilo Sahara Desert or Sahara or Saharan 3.16. We go to Mbuti Pygmies 2.06. East Africa 1.10. The Kao, um um, the Kali Sun, 76.96. West Africa, 
Biaka Pygmy 2.34 and the Omnitech 0 0.63. So these are the Kong people, the population. And the highest number is the Kyosan, a Koisan, which as we've seen is one of the oldest beings or people on planet Earth with the most diverse DNA. 76.96. Then you come down to Bianca Pygmy. We got Bianca Pygmy under Bianca Pygmy, 99.99%. 99.99%. So, meaning that I have genetics definitely from the Bianca Pygmy and from the Khoisan, all right? And here it is. It says Mbuti Pygmy. Once again, in Booty Pygmy, 99.99%. Once again, we have Pygmy, 99.99%. San, 1.24% on the East Africa, too. The Khoisan, 98.75%. Then you have this, the Sanep, which is on the Khoisan, is 99.99%. Then you have Sandawa, a Sandawi, which is under Nilo Saharan, 1.52, East African, 8.35, Mbuti, Pygmy, 2.22, East African, 11.40, Khoisan, 6.83, West African, 17.88, um, Hadsa, uh, 5.02, um, Bianca Pygmy, 3.46, North African, 2.9, and Omnitech, 41.22. So, we definitely have the Twa people in our DNA. There's no doubt about that. And they are the same, them and the same people are the oldest people on planet Earth. And who is the Sen, Sen or the Sen Bushman? As we see here, the hunter-gatherer or the African hunter-gatherer. All right, 200,000 years ago, the ancestors of the Sen people, the Sen Bushmen, began to go their own way from other humans. The Sen, along with the Hatsa and the Pygmies of the Congo, remain witness to the ancient hunter-gatherer traditions of humanity. As the continent was overwhelmed by farmers and pastoralists, these ancient hunters abided, moving to less hospitable territory and achieving some sort of symbiosis with the outsiders. Okay? It wasn't the outsiders. It was their children. The hell are they talking about? No damn outsiders. It was their children. The division within African hunter-gatherers are judged on a scale of tens of thousands of years rather than thousands. This reflects the peculiar role of Africa in human evolutionary history, as African history is far longer than in other regions, at least that has been discovered. And the only reason why I use Africa as still the base is because of a book called Forbidden Archaeology, and the Hidden History of the Human Race, both written by Michael Creedmoor and Dr. Richard L. Thompson. Both of the books states for specifically, all right, that there was a blast that was carried out, all right, um, in South Africa, putting stone, in which that discouraged, discouraged nearly 200 circular fears known as the click drop balls in which they dated back to 2.8 billion years ago the oldest relics found on the planet earth thus far so until we find older relics than 2.8 billion years ago whether they're in 
North America, Central South America, the adjoining islands, whether it's in Asia, Europe, Australia, Antarctica. If you can find older relics or older um, more relics, uh, um, antiques, uh, whatever term that we want to use, if we can find older objects, items, or facts concerning something older than 2.8 billion years ago, I'm going to go with the fact that we're talking about 2.8 billion years ago in Africa. So I'm not so totally on everything came from America. I understand and understand that there was a blast that was carried out also that we've spoken about many times before in Dorchester, Massachusetts, in which that discouraged a metallic vase a vessel, a bell-shaped vessel, of, in which that dated back to 600 million years ago. So America, in particular North America, is an old world. It's an old world. It is an old world, but it's not the old world as of yet. We need more evidence to verify that. So I'm not jumping on the bandwagon with these other people that has not gone by historical facts, documentation, relics, all the facts as we refer to them as items. Anything you wish that can verify that is older, bring it forth. If you can't, Please shut the noise up because you're confusing people. And you're trying to do something in which that try to put you outside of the greatest scholars in which that we have had, such as Dr. John Henry Clark, such as Dr. Yusuf Ben Yakinen, such as Professor Renoko Rashidi, such as Dr. Layla Africa, and I can go on and on with the list. So I don't have a problem with saying that we all come from Africa, which that's what they claim. What I have a problem with is the fact that they don't say they're African Europeans. They don't say that they're African Asians, but they refer to us as African Americans. That's bullshit. We're Americans. Because we've been here so long. Even Africans will tell you that. We've been here for more than seven generations. Therefore, we are cut off from what they refer to as the motherland. We are descendants now from this land. And since we're talking about 600 million years ago, that is definitely showing some connections in which that can't be uh, documented by way, obviously, of DNA. Because it's so far back, they won't even know how to tally it, truthfully, nor would they want to. But they do give us clues, as I've shown in previous videos, of the 12,500 years ago of the Covis man from Montana in which that states basically are the Paleo-Americans. That's the bloodline of the Paleo-Americans. So they show that we are the Paleo-Americans dating back to more than 12,000 500 years ago, which would be 14,500 years ago, almost 15,000 years ago, we were in the Americas.
So in particular, Lee, we was in North America. Then we had the Kennewick, the Kennewick man, Washington State, in which that shows that we was here over 8,300 years ago. So that would be actually 10,000, because you add these 2,000 years on from the zero. So that would now become 10,000, over 10,322 years ago. <laughs> okay? So we were here before the last Ice Age, and we were here after the last Ice Age. The coldest man as well as also the Kennewick man, in which that we have shown in previous videos. That was in my DNA, as well as in your DNA, I'm sure, because as we said before, DNA speaks. It's not called intelligence for nothing. Intel is what? When you're gathering the intel, what is that? Somebody talk to me. When you gather intel, what is that? What are you doing? Information. Right, you're getting information. And then jet is what? From the word genes. So this is information from your genes. So intelligence means information from your genes. So the ancestor speaks. I want to call it genealogy. <laughs> That's right. The study of the genes. The study of the ancestors. Okay, the study of the ancestors. Get the book, A History of the African Omex. Now, they're calling them African Omex, but yet, in another, if you're going to do your research on the Omex, you'll find that the Omex are the Atlanteans, which was here over 50,000 years ago. You'll find out that the Omex also are the Indians. When you break down the DNA, they have A, B, C, D, X, and Q haplogroup. group. These are the beginning stages of who we refer to as the so-called Indians, Native Americans. So you can take it and leave it alone. We know our information. It's been proven. I've done too many videos on this. And not one so-called scholar has stepped to me yet. Not one. So here, the settling of the prehistoric Americas by blacks from Africa and Asia. All right? And because of that, they become known as the Americans. In fact, we find that the origin of the name American is America. America. But who were the America? The followers of Amen. They were the Omegs, who are the Nubian Egyptians. Let's read. It is very likely that the very first inhabitants of the Americas were Negritic blacks from Africa and Asia who arrived in the Americas earlier than 100,000 years before Christ. Now, if you don't know, that is 102,000 years. Because we're talking about now, this 2,000 years that we're in now, from zero to 2022. So we're talking about 102,000 years before Christ. Thus, occurrences will have taken place during a period of human history when the only Homo sapiens were the Greek take blacks. There were no one else here on planet Earth. 100, over 100,000 years ago, y'all. This is the problem that you have with the lies and which you're being told. 
and the recent migration from Africa who entered into a uninhabitable North and South America. Actually, it wasn't uninhabitable. We have already given proof that South America, North America, remember, we just talked about 28 million years ago in Guadalupe, which are the Caribbean islands, there was fossil. A whole skeleton was found without the head and the feet, but everything else was there 28 million years ago. So it wasn't uh, uninhabitable. So that's a mistake that academia and scholars make. Hence, really makes them not so scholarly, doesn't it? Because they're trying to hide information based on academic pressures from the colleges and universities. You see, I'm not pressured. I'm going to tell you the goddamn truth. So here, we must consider the fact that the mitochondrial DNA studies done over the years have already fortified the evidence we point to the monogenetic origin of all humans' presence to a source somewhere in Central Africa. Furthermore, all humans came from this African source and developed into distinct races only about 40,000 years ago. Actually, less than that. The Albion say that, um, as far as the way that he looks presently, that only happened or occurred between 6,000 to 8,000 8, years ago. And the present Asians, the way that they look, only happened or occurred 2,000 years ago. Between two to 4,000 years ago. So this is means you had the Cone people who was in Asia from out of the interior of Africa or the Nubians, which has those info eyelids, and they mixed in with the Caucasians in which that produced the Oriental or Asiatic or Asian um, Oriental race that we have, that we see today. This means that the black race, Negritic, existed for more than 100,000 years before all other races came into being. You get it? See, this is the science. Whether there's corrections that need to be made, we'll, co we'll correct that. We'll correct that. All right? Because that's, that's what we do. We correct it. This is Paul Alfred Barton. Alayhi salam upon him for doing his best as he did to bring us up to speed as far as our heritage, as far as our ancestry. Now we go to East Africa. This is from my um, heritage. This is shared with 21 chromosomes, and it says millions of years ago, East Africa gave rise to the hominid lineage with many human species coming and going around the edge of the Rift Valley. In Ethiopia, there exist some of the first atomically moderate human remains dating to 200,000 years before the presence. Now, this is quite conservative based on the fact that we just finished talking about a 28-million-year-old um, a 28-million-year-old <laughs> fossil found in Guadalupe 200,000 years is nothing as far as, as they say, they had to say moderate human remains. Because there's ancient human remains in the state we just spoke about. It is likely that non-African humans derive from an East African population. Hold up. It is likely that non-African humans derive from an East African population. In other words, the Europeans, the Albions. All right, and we talk about Europeans, we talk about the Albions, because there's also so-called Moorish Europeans or European Moors. All right, which is also in the ancestry of many of us. But here, we know there's the Huguenots and so forth and so on. So, in the Hasburg, um, I won't go over all that today, but we we seeing these connections here. Thank you. 
And it says, perhaps a group which also gave rise to the Heza hunter gatherers. All right. Now, the moderate population of East Africa or a fusion between disparate, disparate um, elements. First, there is a deep ancestry of which the heads or representative, which has roots in the region hundreds of thousands of years ago. Some of the ancestors of these people migrated out of Africa, but others moved westward, creating the fusion of West Africans in time with the Neolithic and agro um, pastor, um, pastoralism. Euro Asian or Euro Asian people migrated back to East Africa. This gave rise to the Afro Asiatic and Nihilist people about 3,000 years ago. Bantu agriculturalists moved eastward and mixed with the native hunter gatherers and Nihilist agro pastor. Um, Pastorellis. Now, Monterey, East Africa is a cultural palimpsest, but it has always been thus. One of the major heaths of the human race, East Africa has been a source and target for our species, pre or pre nation, all right, a pre nation, pre generation, generation, pre generation, all right. Hopefully, I get that said that properly there. All right, so as we see, we're looking at. Timelines All right Ancient Ethiopia 2500 BC from there we get the The ancient Egyptian bloodline from out of Ethiopia which correlates perfectly with what Dr. Ben stated What Dr. John Henry Clark stated this is DNA. Everything about DNA is not a lie. Let me say that again. Everything about DNA is not a lie. It's your interpretation of it. As long as you don't have Henry Louis Gates, then you won't mess up. <laughs> You'll mess up with Skip. Oh, because Skip will skip a whole lot of shit. Right here, your closest ancient populations. Anything at 10 and below means that I am directly related. So here it is, ancient Egyptian, Amorites, Canaanites, and Semites, the Pontic Empire. And you see there, ancient Egyptian. Don't let the picture fool you. They always got to put themselves in it somewhere. But this is about you right here and now. As you see, ancient Egyptian plus Amorite is 6.956. In other words, less than 7% distant, meaning that I am directly related and in connection to the ancient Egyptian. As you see here, ancient Egyptian 7.133%. As an Egyptian plus Canaanite, Semite, 7.94. Canaanite, Semite, 9.567. Canaanite, Semite plus Amorite, 10.557. Now, all of these are at 10 and below, meaning that I am ancient Egyptian, meaning I am Canaanite, meaning I am Semite, which is Hebrew, Israelite. All of that is connected. As we have said before in a previous video, 
And this is all connected once again. You have Pontic plus Canaanite, Semite, 12.24. You have Ancient Egyptian plus Pontic, 12.58. And Amorite, 12.94. All right? Meaning, once again, that this is direct connections. So we find that sample match is to the ancient Egyptian. His name is Nekat Ankh. They don't know his Y DNA, allegedly, but they have his mitochondrial DNA. M1A1. M1A1. Now, hold on. Let's let me see if, we, if I can find M1A1. Let's see if I can find that connection here. Now, M1A1. Okay, let's see if we can find a connection because remember, there's something in which that was very profound in which that was said by an archaeologist from South Carolina. His name is Albert Goodyear. Albert Goodyear. Remember, he said something very phenomenal. And I want to add that into the mix. Albert Goodyear. All right. Now. Uh -huh. Aha. Yeah, hey, yeah, How y'all doing today? We doing great. How you doing? Dr. Excellent, excellent, excellent. All right. So I'm going to find what Albert Goodyear stated. So just bear with me for a second here, y'all. All right. Just bear with me for a second. So we're going, we're going to find it. I got so much information. It's all right. But, you know, as usual, we always get through it. And we build on it and grow from it. All right. So let me see if this is it here. It might be up here. But remember, the haplogroup group is M1. All right, M1. All right. Dr. Lima, I think you were talking about that in your last class. Right. I did speak about it, but now I definitely got to show these connections here, you know. Um, yeah, yeah, I think I, I might be in that region now. Let's see here. All right, so we're speaking about M1, which is based from something in which that was stated by Albert Church Ward and Albert Gigi, I should say. You know, it actually was repeated by both of them, but in particular, Albert Goodyear, South Carolina professor, when she speaks about these connections here. All right, so let me see if I can find them. And of course, if there's any question before I can get to it, you know, please ask. So you have several, matter of fact, you have out of the, uh, most of us have se at least these seven haplogroups or less. All right, seven haplogroups or less, because they're known as the seven daughters of Eve. All right, there's a book called The Seven Daughters of Eve. All right, and you can look up the origin of these um, particular uh, of these particular um, haplogroups. All right. And um, understanding these various haplogroups is all part of your genetic structure help you to understand the travel 
in which that has occurred throughout the world. All right? And these travels are very important because it helps to document who you actually are as far as your various nationalities as compared to them just calling you Negro, Black, and Colored, which is no nationality at all. All right? So that is the reason for this. Dr. Lee, question. Yes. What part of the ministry does poverty point to a part? Poverty point? Yeah. Uh-huh. What about it, man? So where does that fit in? Like, what, uh, was, that was, like, after the think in Atlantis, right? Um, yes. Um, poverty point is one of the, is, is actually the oldest, one of the oldest, if not the oldest, um, structure of um, mounds in North America. And of course, you know, we talk about the remnants of 20,000 mounds as compared to originally the infrastructure had over 200,000 mounds, but because of the infrastructure um, was built over on top of them, there was many cities that was flooded um, that is now under lakes that are now under rivers and so forth and so on. So this is done purposely in order to uh, hide the information from us concerning um, who we are and our ancestry and keep us looking and depending upon their reconstructed history and information. Okay? Now, the original inhabitants of that land mass, of course, are um, known as the Omex, as they came from up out of the interior of Mexico, from Tabasco, um, San Lorenzo, and La Venta. They went up into um, Mississippi um, area in which um, the Mississippi Delta, and now we see them... Um, along that path there, um, in which that, of course, covers the south, covers um, the east, of course, um, into California and on around into the Great Lake area. Here's the book, The Seven Daughters of Eve. This is by Brian Sykes. The Seven Daughters of Eve, the science that reveals our genetic ancestry. You want to get your hands on that book to understand more of this information. All right. You definitely want to get your hands on that. That's the book that will help you understand the seven mitochondrial DNA of the women, particularly All right, I think I'm about in that area now. Sorry, y'all. All right, so uh, let me see here. Uh, the point is, once again, is M1. M1. Peace, Alan. How you doing? Peace. Uh, I'll tell you what, you said that was by Brian Sykes, right? Yeah, Brian Sachs, Sykes. Sykes. Okay. Sykes. Thank you. S Y K E S Sykes. I'm um, Brian B R Y A N. You know we spell it B R um um I A N. I A N. Right, that's how we spell it. But he's B R Y A N. All right. So the, book again? the seven daughters of Eve. The seven. The seven daughters. Of Eve. Okay. okay mm -hmm. So, now, we showed you that the ancient Egyptians, Neket Ankh, 
one of my ancient relatives, and I'm pretty sure probably yours too, the way that genetics break down, because um, you choose yourselves because the ancestor speaks through your DNA into this information. So the M1 that we just seen correlates to the M1 in which that I'll take a snapshot of and go back up and we'll see how it is combines here. And you'll see it too. All right, so that M1, that's what we want to focus on here. Very important because it correlates to the ancient. Once again, Nekat Ankh. Nekat Ankh. Ancient Egypt. This is the 12th dynastic period, y'all. This is metal. Chondral DNA, M1, A1, all right? Age is 1800 BC. So we're talking about almost 4,000 years ago. 38,022 years ago. So the DNA is M1, A1. So here we find... According to Albert Goodyear, a South Carolina University professor, humans lived along the east banks of the Savannah River 50,000 years ago. Now, that same M1 blood, excuse me, haplogroup or genetics, all right, check this out. 51,700 years ago, North American site found in Allendale County, South Carolina, by the Savannah River is less than 30 miles away from the Atlantic Ocean. The evidence for the ancient African migration came in multiple forms, skulls, skeletons, footprints in lava, campsites, and genetic M174. So the same M1 genetics that is found in ancient Egypt, we in the throne, is the same M1 genetics that's in South Carolina in the Savannah River Near the Savannah River, Atlantic Ocean, dating back to 51,700 years ago. So you're talking about from 3,800 years to 51,700 years ago, the same genetic M1 haplogroup was in America, is in Egypt. Africa, Kemet, Tamare. And this is what he says. He says linguistics, paintings, carvings, architecture, Egyptian writing. So what did they do? Did they take zeros off of the age? Because you know they have done that. But here it is. Mitochondrial DNA M1. So that means that the Y DNA had to be D DNA. I mean D um D um DNA um uh, Y DNA had to be D haplogroup. Because this is what he said he found. M one seven four and D haplogroups. Do you know that Y DNA D haplogroup is Native American? <laughs> uh oh so M1 A1 this M1 7 4 and this D haplo group so 51,700 years ago that is way before the Ice Age, which was 12,500 years ago, 
before the Ice Age, and then after the uh, melting of the Ice Age was ten, was um, approximately 10,000 years ago, or 8,300 years ago. So this is all between and beyond, y'all. So, genetics M174, the same M1 is the same haplogroup, which that is found in Egypt, which is found in America, which he states here is Egyptian writing. He tells you that these Africans are Egyptians. So not only did we have the ancient Egyptians here 51,700 years ago, but they also ruled our throne or kingdoms in ancient Egypt with the same haplogroup. Who was during the 12th dynastic period? Let's look at that. Here it is. M1A1. Haplogroup M1A1 is a branch on the maternal tree of humankind. Its age is between 9,600 years and 16,300 years. Well, uh, excuse me, but he found genetic M174 site dating back to 51,700 years ago. So it's older than some damn 16,300 years ago. All right? So here, how about group M1A1 about 13,000 years ago? Origin, Northeast Africa, Mediterranean. Blur. This branch was born around 13,000 years ago. Descendants of this legacy or lineage spread across much of North Africa and the shores of Mediterranean and reaching the Levant region. Obviously, it reached further than that. It was in America. 51,700 years ago. See, somebody's lying. Today, this line is more common in Ethiopian Jews. In other words, the Falashian Jews. The black Jews. Or the black Hebrew. Or the black Israelites. And I'm using the term black because this is what they refer to them in history. Well, we know them as Jewish Moors or Moorish Jews. Or Nubian Islamic Hebrews. <laughs> Algeria, 14%. And Somalia, 11%. So this M1A1 is connected in all of them, as well as in myself. So here, there's a late period, ancient Egypt. This is around 650 BC, and this distance is 29.86, which means I'm related to this line. And we can see here Egyptian mother, Syasi, Lebanon, 500 BC. 29.19 mitochondrial DNA T2 C1 plus 146. Now that dates back to over 4,000 years ago. So here it says 4,000 years in contact, conflict, and cultural change has little genetic impact in Near East. The studies reveal that some people did mix and form families with people from other cultures. One burial site was found to contain the remains of an Egyptian mother and her son, whose father had Egyptian and Lebanese ancestry. However, this cosmeto um, cosmetolitan mixing did not seem to be widespread. So we look several Lebanese in Egypt. Is known as what? The Levantine Egyptian. The Levantine Egyptian are an ethnic minority group in Egypt. They are Egyptian who have descended from 
the Levant, mostly who is now Syria and Lebanon. The majority of Egyptian history, a historic Syro Lebanese communities, is Christian, mainly Eastern Catholic and Eastern Orthodox. All right? So a lot of these wars was between north um, was between excuse, was between religions, not not per se nationality. Negroes get caught up into Christianity, get caught up into Islam, get caught up into Judaism or he or, or Hebrew teachings, and begin to start fighting each other over doctrine, as we still do today. Due to the rise of nationalism, along with the loss of economic freedoms during the 1950s, a part of um, Egypt. Several Lebanese communities left the country immigrating to America, Europe, and Australia, as well as many returning to their native Lebanon, especially both uh, Beirut and Syria. Many believe the descendants of Egyptian Syrio, um, Syro Lebanese communities include the world renowned Egyptian actor Omar Sharif and Egyptian film director Youssef. Um, can hang, can hang. All right. So here we have um, the Ptolemaic Egypt, date back to 50 BC. And we have mitochondrial DNA U6A2 and Y DNA E1B1 B1A1B2 dash V22. We have here the Ptolemaic Egypt, 50 BC, genetic de, um, descent, or distance to 28.85. All right, same thing. All right, we have here the Nubian, which is the, the Kulu Norti. Malkulian, Nubia. Also the French royalty, English royalty. So those who came upon the French throne, who those who came upon the English throne, are descended from the Nubians. So when they tell you that these are Europeans, Albions, on the French throne or on the English throne, you know that that's a lie. Because DNA tells you right here that there was Nubians that sat on the French royalty throne, on the English royalty throne, and had the Y DNA, G2A, and mitochondrial DNA, L1, B1A2A. Age was two was um eight hundred and twenty five AD. Genetic difference is twenty distance is twenty point forty five. Now, what is the kingdom of Marcuria? Well, genetic difference or distance is 72.860. All right. We have genetic distance of 69.8870. And as you see here, they don't want to tell you about how close that is. But here, it says... Forest was a major city located in Lower Nubia along the Nile River near the border of modern Egypt and Sudan. All right, so we talk about the Nubians. So we come to find out is that the same Nubian, same Nubian Egyptians, known as the Omex, was also the Atlanteans. So if you get the book by Danelli, Atlantis, it says he speaks about the Atlantis story told by Plato in the Timorous and um, Critias dialogues is not a legend, but verifiable history. Atlantis was the region where men first rose from the state of barbarism to civilization. Well, in the Americas. It says Atlantis was the source of civilization in Egypt, South America, Mexico, Europe and North America. 
Now, this makes so much sense because we just showed you that 51,700 years ago, that same M1 haplogroup was in America. But yet, at the same time, it was sitting on the throne in ancient Africa during the 12th dynastic period. All right, with the governor, um, Nakat Unk. Okay? So, we know that the Nubian, the Nubian Egyptians or Egyptian Nubians who are the Olmecs were also the Atlanteans and this was going back and forth. They, they, they had the capability of cell. They have the capability of, of um, ships and going back and forth. I get the book, New Atlantis, began by the Lord Verulam, all right, a platform of a monarchical government. And it says here, how the great Atlantis, which we call America, abound once in tall ships. How the people of Peru, through the South Sea, all right, and those of Mexico, through the Atlantic to the Mediterranean Seas, they both in 10 years. All right. You have a hard time understanding about the Atlantis being America? Well, here's a map. It's called Historic Map Atlantis Insula. 1669 by Nicholas Sanson. Here it is, and it's showing you North, Central, and South America, the adjoining islands, is actually known as Atlantis. In fact, if you can go to the Bahamas, now to Nassau, Nassau, Bahamas, and you will find where they um, actually have Areas closed off, saying that these are um, water holes for mermaids. Now, get the metaphysical Bible dictionary. It will help you understand the symbology, the allegorical uh, science of the Bible. Get the Holy Quran of the Moorish Holy Temple of Science, divinely prepared by. Noble Ali, in chapter 47, he says, Egypt, the capital empire of the dominion of Africa. So this capital empire called Egypt actually was also Atlantis. How do you know? Because it tells you right here. The inhabitants of Africa are the descendants of the ancient Canaanites from the land of Canaan. Now, I showed you that I have... Canaanite ancestry. Same thing. Prophet Nebuchadnezzar was on point. Oman Kush and his family are the first inhabitants of Africa who came from the land of Canaan. His father Ham and his father family was second. Then came the road Ethiopia, which means the demarcation line of the domain of the Maxim, the first true and divine name of Africa, the dividing of the land between father and son. The dominion of Cush, northeast and southeast Africa, and northwest and southwest was his father's dominion of Africa. In later years, many of his brethren from Asia and the Holy Land joined them. The Moabites from the land of Moab would receive permission from the pharaohs of Egypt to settle and inhabit northwest Africa. They were the founders and the true possessors of the present Moroccan Empire. So... Atlantis Empire, Egypt Empire, the Moroccan Empire, or the same empire. With their Canaanite, Hittite, and Amorite brethren who sojourned from the land of Canaan seeking new homes, their dominion and habitation extended from northeast and southwest Africa across Great Atlantis. And even unto present North, South, and Central America, and also Mexico, and the Atlantis Islands. Before 
the great earthquake which caused the great Atlantic Ocean. Okay? So, Prophet Nebuchadnezzar already told us the science. We just got to get it right ourselves. So right here, ancient Egypt, Y chromosome, E1B1. All right, A1, and then mitochondrial DNA, LOD3B1, 900B um, AD. Now, all right, we come on down. We spoke about before All right for y'all can see connectors. All right, let's read about the M one or we'll come down from the M one I should say, because we already read that part. So All right, we have ancient Egypt, 96.1%. All right, 96.1%. All right, that's, that's, that's quite a bit. That shows direct ancestry. That's what that shows. All right, direct ancestry. All right. Now, 96.1% ancient Egyptian, and where's the bloodline, or in this case, DNA, excuse me, mitochondrial DNA is LOD361, and Y DNA E1B1A1. Now, if you notice, this is the face of King Type. Now, we come down by the E1B1A. As you see here, ancient Egypt, and that of course is E1B1A, is Ramesses III, 1217 BC to 1155 BC. So, Ursa Mayat, Ra, Mary Amen, Ramesses III, also written Ramesses or Ramesses, was the second pharaoh of the 20th dynastic period in ancient Egypt. He is thought to have reigned from March 26, 1186 to April 15, 1155 BC, and is considered to be the last great monarch of the new kingdom to wield or well a substantial um, authority over Egypt. His long reign saw the decline of Egyptian politics and economic power linked to a series of invasions and internal economic problems that also plagued pharaohs before him. He had also been described as war as war pharaoh due to his strong military strategies. He led the way by defeating the invasions known as the Sea Peoples, who had caused destruction in other civilizations and empires. He was able to save Egypt from collapsing at the time when many other empires fell due to the last Bronze Age. However, the damage of the invasions took a toll on Egypt. All right, so this is Ramses III, and Ramses, this is a picture of Ramses III with his son, um, 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 well, for the I'm gonna show you that, but this is Ramses the third, who was the son of King Sinatik, um and Queen Tai Meriness. Although little is known of Ramses' father, Egyptologists believe Ramses the third to be the grandson of the great Ramses the second. He became king at the death of his father in March eleven uh, uh 800, um, 1187 B.C. He will rule for over 31 years until approximately 11, 
51 BC. The next three rulers of Egypt, Ramesses IV, Ramesses V, Ramesses VI, were all his sons. Despite the long rule, little is known of the royal family in the house of Ramesses III. He had many wives, including Isis, Titi, and Ty. He had a least 10 sons and one daughter. Many of his sons died before him and were buried in the Valley of the Queens. Okay. King Ramesses III held many names meant to identify him as close to the gods. His birth name of Ramesses meant Ra has fashioned me or Re has fashioned him. Adding to his name was Hakadi Anu, meaning ruler of Heliopolis or Anu. His throne name was Ursa Mayatra, Maryam, uh, Mary Amun. A powerful is the justice of Re, beloved of Amun. Egyptology spelled his name in many ways, including Ramesses the Third. Now, this is the picture I was talking about, Ramesses and Prince um, Amin uh, uh, Heru Kepara Chef before Het Heru, which is Hawthor. All right? Um, this is in the Valley of the Queens. Now, if you see why DNA matches, you see E1B1A. All right? And what does it mean? Right here, it says ancient Egypt, ancestral sea, valley of the king, Ramesses the third. So it shows the relationship between my DNA and Ramesses the third. And remember, it was 96.1% connection. So basically, it's direct male ancestry bloodline. So we can actually resurrect, resurrect the, um, the Egyptian throne. Um, being that, as we've seen, it was dominion of Egypt, <laughs> meaning it wasn't, you see the dominion, it was in where? Africa, but it was also in America, as you see, North, Central, and South America, and the adjoining islands, Mexico. Remember, they called it Atlantis. We just read that in the Holy Quran Circle 7, so we can actually resurrect, because there's many who have the same genetic Connection. We just have to find um, um, the people who have this genetic connection to Ramesses the Third, and we can actually resurrect this bloodline right here in the Americas. All right. So this is the purpose why we're trying to do this because we got a uh, 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 end game here, a game changer here, and we say can't be denied. We already showed you that Albert Goodyear said that, no, we're talking about 51,700 years ago. This M1 um, bloodline was here with Egyptian writings. And we show you who was on the throne during the 12th dynastic period. It was Neket, all right, Ankh, Neket Hank, who was the governor. He was one of the governors. Means he was from that royal bloodline. And that boy, your bloodline was here in the Americas many years before, hundreds and thousands of years before. And this can't be denied. In the Americas. Okay? So, let's continue on. This is why I'm talking about we got a lot to do, but we can't do it if um, we got Negroes trying to um, upset and distract us from our um, end game, from our goals. So here, paternal haplogroup. So, uh, Saru Alim, your paternal haplogroup is E-M263.2. As our ancestors virtued out of Eastern Africa, they branched off into diverse groups that 
crossed and recrossed the globe over tens of thousands of years. Some of these migrations can be traced through haplogroups, families of lineage that descend from a common ancestor. Your paternal haplogroup can reveal the path followed by the men of your paternal line. So we know that the men, here it is. E-M263.2 Your paternal haplogroup traces back to a man who lived approximately 10,000 years ago. That's nearly 400 generations ago. What happened between then and now? As researchers and um, citizen, sci and, um, citizen scientists develop um, this, discover more about your haplogroup, new details may be added to the story of your paternal line. So right here, this E-M263.2, which is actually um, ELB1 um, um, A, which actually that's what it was before. Now this is the new name that they have given to it is E-M263.2. Um, it's relatively common among 23andMe customers. So it's relatively common. It's one in 600, but everyone is not going to have 96.1% <laughs> connection to it. So today you share a haplogroup with all the men who are paternal line descendants of the common ancestors of E-N2632, including other 23andMe customers, which would make us actually cousins down the line. So here... Capital group A, the story of all of our paternal lines can be traced back over 275,000 years ago to just one man. The common ancestor of haplogroup group A, remember, remember I, I told you um, in the previous class that the omics were part of haplogroup group A. So that same haplogroup group A that was in Africa that ranged from out of 275,000 years ago was in the Americas over 51,700 years ago among the Omecs, the Nubian Egyptians, the Atlanteans. However, while his male line descendants passed down their Y chromosome generations after generations, the lineage from one man the old men died out. Well, obviously, the ancient Egyptian line didn't die out because that's 96.1%. If we rounded that off, that would be almost, that would be 100%, y'all, if we rounded that off. Now, everybody got told how to round off numerals in school. Over time, his lineage alone gave rise to all other haplogroups that exist today. All right? So, the origin of migration of haplogroup E-M180 dominates south of the Sahara. Then that came to E-M263-2, or point two, which is mine. And as it says, many of yours. So here it says you share an ancient paternal lineage with Pharaoh Ramesses III, which is E-V-3-8. All right. It says right here, Pharaoh Ramesses III defended Egypt in three consecutive wars during his approximately 30-year reign, but provoked dissent within his administration, catalyzing his mountain internal strife one of his Ramesses, lesser wives, Ty, has to plot to have her son, Pentuer, upsert the throne by having Ramesses III murdered along with his appointed heir. A papyrus record of the resulting trial explains that the plot failed 
and that all involved was tried and convicted. However, a modern CT scan of Ramesses' third mummies revealed a deep slit in his throat. We opened in a case long thought closed. The bombers went to great length to cover up other wounds, including fashion, uh, fashioning a fake toe out of resin because Ramsey's real one had been hacked off, likely during a fatal attack. For thousands of years, Ramsey's burial or dormant concealed the wounds to mark one of the most famous royal dramas in history. Ramesses III paternal lineage belongs to haplogroup EV, E-V38, from which your line also stems. You and Ramesses III shares an ancient paternal line ancestor who probably lived in North Africa or West Asia. Okay. And as I said before, um, he was melanated then, and I'm melanated now. So we find that Ramesses III, father of ancient America. So he's the father of ancient America. This is by R.A. Joras Boy. Now, this is what it said here. Valley of the Kings, also known as Valley of the Gates of the Kings, is a valley in Egypt where from a period of 500 years from 16th to the 11th century BC, rock cut tombs were excavated for the pharaohs and powerful nobles of the New Kingdom, the 18th to the 20th dynasties of ancient Egypt. All right? The valley stands on the west bank of the Nile, opposite Thebes, moderate Lexor, within the heart of Theban, um, Necro policy, um, um, Polis, uh, Necro or the city of the day, um, as it's called, the Wadi consists of two valleys, the east valley, which the majority of the royal tombs were situated, and the west valley, which is called the Valley of the Monkeys, which is actually the Valley of Tahuti, because the monkeys was actually Tahuti, the baboons, all right, symbols. That was Tahuti symbol. So it was the valley of, the, of, um, of wisdom, all right? Now, since the 1920s, the valley has been famous for the discovery of the tomb of Tutankhamen. So this is where they found Tutankhamen at, all right? Now, this is how the valley of the kings look. Inside, these are the vaults of how it looks. Outside, of course, um, it looks as though there was an actual pyramid there on top and the bottom, the parts was cut. Um, of course, you know that this had to look magnificent um, back in the days because you can look and tell from just the inside of it that it was not playing. Right? This, this was the sent off the pharaohs to a... Um, to heaven, as you can see here, beautiful inside. Right here's another uh, way of looking at it. So we find that R. A. Jurassic Boy speaks that Ramsey right? the third father of ancient America. All right, Cornac Egyptology history and African studies. In a bold attempt to rescue and restore American history to its rightful place, R.A. Jarasboy, the world's leading authority on cultural or cross-cultural Egypto-American civilizations, reconstructs the realization of Ramses III's wish to find an earthly paradise. This adventure led him to the Americas. In this detailed, comprehensive text, the author demonstrates through the use of 134 illustrations and religious, artistic, um, mythological, and other cultural correspondence, the precedence of ancient Egyptian influence on the, formate, on the form, formate, formative development of Mexico 
and on the United States. The evidence is convincing. The ideas congently presented and argued will leave no stone unturned. Y.A. Jurassic Boy is the foremost scholar alive today on Mesoamerican civilization. He is the author of Ancient Egyptians in the Pacific and a third volume worked on Old World Influences in the Americas. Old World Influences in the Americas. Now, so we know he's showing the Nubian Egyptians and we're going over the fact and I've shown you our tour guide who is a Mayan back in 2013 March 2013 he told us on several different occasions on many different occasions that we were the Nubian Egyptians and that the Nubian Egyptians were the Olmecs and he said that some stayed we are those who stayed so whether it was 5,000 years ago or 50,000 years ago and they just simply took off a zero it doesn't matter because we here so he says the chief claim to fame of Ramesses the has been his conquest of the sea peoples his temple walls at um, Medinet Hapo depict the naval battle the first such pictured momentarily if Egypt had fallen then to the combined Mediterranean powers its history might have been very different but again had he not sent the expedition to the far west of the world the transformation of Mesoamerica would not have come about and take the turn that it did when stock is taken in the achievement of the Pharaoh all right you got the Pay attention here because because he breaks it down the achievements of the pharaohs Ramses the third will have to be accorded the double distinction savior of Egypt all right and the father of Olmec Mexico so the ancient Egyptians with helmets on prior to the Olmecs she people as they are called here is the illustration of them having the same helmets on the little Twa people and we showed you was in North America was in South America was in Mexico the same places that Nobu Dali stated they were is the same exact places uh, that Albert Church would claim that they were in origin of primitive man in his book here's the face of the ancient Arabs Yemen which is the exact same faces as we see all right this is the Kushite Arabians carved monuments directly in the rock in many places throughout Arabia here we see a rock carved monument with that face that looks like an Olmec head the features shown below a shadow of a doubt that he is one of our ancestors this was built by the ancient Kushites of Arabia who built many monolithic structures throughout Arabia it is beginning to become clear that Kush had begat Nimrod was the Kush located in Arabia and here's the same face as we see here Nubian, Nubian Egyptians or Egyptian Nubians Omex had 1500 to 1000 BC. Notice that the dates of these heads correspond exactly with the date of the destruction of Atlantis, 1500 BC. So, let's look at the DNA. Right here, I'm going to read the last sentence. This pioneering study of mitochondrial DNA in 2018 was carried out on two Olmec individuals, one from Santa Lorenzo and the other from uh, Lomas de Sepot, resulting in both cases in an unequivocal uh, 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 presence of the distinct mutation of the haplogroup A. 
A. A. A, B, C? Okay. Maternal lineage. They shared the most abundance of the five mitochondrial haplogroups characteristics of the indigenous population of the Americas. Of the Americas. A, B, C, D, and X. A, B, C, D, and X. I have all of these. And I'm pretty sure you have these same ones in your tests. This is the point. Because this verifies that you are of the Omex, the Egyptian Nubians, who was here five to 50,000 and more years ago, verified, and is part of the indigenous population of the Americas, more than seven generations ago. Thus, you are indigenous Aboriginal Americans, not Negro, black, and colored. Proof. This is proof beyond a shadow of a doubt. That's right. And nobody argue with you on that. Exactly. It's, it's not arguable. No, it's not. It's non-disputable. non-disputable. It cannot be disputed. Exactly. Ambiguous among the Omex or Africoid types, nowhere but in Egypt at the time was Levantines and black African intermingled. The Colossus Omex Hayes clearly represents Africans. This is one of over a dozen so far excavated. All of them have broad nose and thick fleshy lips and quite unlike the Native Americans or Native um, Indian, excuse me. The examination of Omex skulls by a Polish anthropologist has independently detected a strong Africoid element, proof that they are not just African, but blacks from Egypt, and is that nowhere else at the time was African heads. Okay, as you see here, here you go, an isle of African heads without the helmets, but we showed you where the helmets came from. And it says, or oh, what? Well, Ramesid Nubian heads from Tanis, which was the port from which expeditions were sent on the Mediterranean. In other words, where's this at? This is Libya. All right? Into the Mediterranean. On into, so, so they did not go all the way around as many speculate. It went one nation over into Libya. Into the Mediterranean. And came between Africa and Iberia. And came into the Americas. They did not go all the way around from Egypt all the way down into the horn of um, uh, um, Africa. Down into South Africa on up into America in that way. They didn't do that. They said there was a port from whence expeditions were sent on the Mediterranean. The resemblance extends from the incise parallel line on the leather helmets. The other un- undoubted stamp of Egypt is that nowhere else at the time was Colossus sculptures being carved and transported miles from their court um, quandaries. Here they was brought 50 miles through some of them weighed as much as 40 tons. The powerful portraits um, portraits identify that they are persons in authority. The technique of monument to stone carvings did not exist in Mexico before the Omex of it. I now think that some among the Nubian crew may have been ship captains. Of course they were. Remember that the leader of Head Heshepsut punt expedition, right? And when you kick a football, you punt the ball. And these helmets are the same helmets in which they, they showed you that was worn by the earlier football players back in the 1900s, early 1900s, before they went to these 
plastic helmets that they have now. Was caught now. It was punt. Punt was also Libya. All right, Tripoli, the capital. You know about Tripoli. From the halls of Montezuma to the shores of Tripoli. Punt expedition was called Nahasi, the Nubian. We know also that on Ramesses the Third punt expedition were ships, captains, inspectors, and petty officers. To conclude, with the aid of texts and comprehensive evidence from both sides, I have been able to surmise who were some of the people that took part in the great voyage to the West. They included Egyptian priests, Nubians, and Levantins. Egyptian priests. So I stated in my book, it is an archaeological fact that the ancient Kushites were a colony of Ethiopia and the Egyptians that colonized portions of West Africa, Samaria, and China, as well as also North and South America, was from this same bloodline. So, the question was asked, how many people in the world are estimated to have E1B1A? And it says, it's a genetic marker of the ancient Hebrew Israelites. The ancient Hebrew Israelites. So not only is it the ancient Egyptian, it's also the ancient Hebrew Israelites. So when they talk about the, um, that the Native Americans or Native Indians had Jewish or Hebrew Israelite ancestry, then that came by way of the Omex, Nubian Hebrews, who were the Egyptian priests, who was also the Levite priests. Haplogroup E1B1A, Hebrew Israelite DNA haplogroup. This haplogroup is found predominantly among Bantu Negroes, descended to include but not in, limited to the African Leba. My ancestry also. Many West African tribes, Igbo Jew, Yoruba Jew, same ancestry. African American, of course, same ancestry. West Indian, same ancestry. Brazilian, same ancestry, same ancestry, and ancestry. Um, Haitian, same um, ancestry. And other Negro influence races throughout the Caribbean and scattered across all different nations, contrary to first DNA reporting. This is not a sub-Sahara or hermetic haplogroup. It is a Semitic in origin. Negroes have been identified as being exempt from the bloodline of Ham per the Sardavan Compact Dictionary, Bible Dictionary. This haplogroup represents the wide DNA of Jacob, the father of the 12 tribes of Israel. So Ramses III has the exact same haplogroup as the Hebrew Israelites, Y DNA of Jacob, the father of the twelve tribes of Israel. This is by Dr. Um, Yahshua ben Ephraim. This is where we get the book, The Jew, a Negro, being a study of Jewish ancestry from an impartial standpoint, author Talmich Abernathy. And it specifically stays right here. Arrides affirms that the Amuni were originally a colony of Egyptian and Ethiopians and that they spoke a language composed of words from both those nations. It is elsewhere shown that the Jews and Egyptians had intermarried. And this is the reason why we got Ramses III on the throne. And he has the same blood type as the Hebrews, the Hebrew Israelites. Here we have another instance of Egyptians in turn being interweighed to the Ethiopians. So, this will be verified the fact also that the same 
haplogroup group is the same that we find within the Moors of Cordoba, the Caliphate. As you see, E1B1A, 1A1. So E1B1 um, um, A is the same group. So the same group in which that passes through the Egyptians, passes through the Hebrew Israelites, passes through the Moors. As I said before, thus there's no debate. And as I've always said before, I'm all that and more. And this is shown through the DNA. So, all right, genetic distance measures how close you are to a given moderate population. Many moderate populations are surprisingly close to one another, which is often due to true common ancestry. Five means that you're close to this population. Ten means that you can fit in to this population. Fifteen means a related population. So, let's look at it. Coptic um, Egyptian, when we get Egyptian, 11.27. Palestinian, 13.19. Sumerian, um, tribe, 14.27. Bedouin, 14.55. Jordan, 14.58. Sumerian Levi tribe 1469. So that means that we're from the high priest of the Levites, Old Testament. Reunite Jewish 1557 or 53 and Samaritan 1595. All right, once again, um, coming from the same group, E M2, formerly E1B1A. All right. So, right here, 10 means you can fit into this population. 15 means a related population. So, I can fit into the population of the ancient Egyptians, 11.27. Um, and then, um, a related population for the Levite tribes, the um, women, Jewish, and Samaritans. All right? All right, so right here, all right, so let's look once again. At the tribal connections. Okay. Um, the Doan, 9.853. Coptic Egyptian, as we said, 11.27. We come down. Lebanon, Jewish, 1581. Um, we see the Tunisian, or Tunisian, Jewish, 17.32. And the Samaritan Levi tribe, 17.49. The ancient Egyptian, 7.822. So as we see, I, uh, we are very close. Uh, we are in that genetic bloodline right there. Of course, that is due to Ramesses the third, um, as well as to um, another was due to Nakti Ankh. We have ancient Egyptian plus. Canaanite Semite, 7.246. So when I say, so it, we are Canaanites. Prophet Nebuchadnezzar Ali was not lying. This, this bears witness right here to him stating that we Canaanites. And he didn't even have DNA kits. <laughs> okay. Ancient Egyptian, 7822 once again, ancient Egyptian plus Amorites, 8.342. Ancient Egyptian plus Hittite, 12.83. Minoan, all right, this is the pre-Greeks, before the Greeks, Freaks, with the Minoans, plus ancient Egyptian, 13.32. Canaanite, Semite, plus Amorite, 14.6. Canaanite, Semite, 14.62. Amorites, 19.81. 
Minoans, 26.81. Hittite, 27.24. Okay? This is to the closest ancient group, Coptic Egyptian. All right? We come down. We go closer. We go to the Algerian Jewish, Italian Jewish, 3.931. Tunisian Jewish, 6.507. South Italian, Southern Italian, so Sicilian, <laughs> 9.011. Liberian Jewish, 9.386. East Sicilian, 10.85. West Sicilian, 11.63. Mortez, 11.71. Ashkenazin, 12.19. So, I have all these Jewish, and I'm sure you, once again, you do too. Here it is for Ethiopian. Amhara, 2.964. It means I'm definitely in the group of the Phalasian Hebrews. Ethiopian, Oromo, 12.18. Somalian, 4.66. Ethiopian, Walata, 17.41. Maasai, 37.63. Ethiopian, Ari Cultivator, 38.69. Sandawi, 42.88 and Hassa 44.61. These are names in which that we um, went over earlier. All right, you combine that information. All right, here it is. The closest ancient group again, and this is Ethiopian Amhara. Who do you see? The Bantu 10.78. Bantu plus Makurian, which is Nubians 10.4. Bantu 10.78. Bantu plus more. 11.33. So I am a more. More, again, 22.38. Mokoya, plus more, 22 plus, I mean, 0.39. Mokoya, 25.04. So who are the Moors? The Moors are Ethiopians. It just shows you the genetic line of the, of the Moors is that from the Ethiopians. This is what it is, the Bantu Ethiopians, or the Moors. Direct bloodline. Right, he didn't have no DNA test to prove this. We do. So this is why I'm proving it through my DNA, because this proves everything that Prophet Mabudrani stated. It proves it, that he was not lying to us, that he told us correct, verifiable information that can be proven nowadays. And no matter what other Negroes want to say, they can't dismiss this. Oh, and that's can. the problem. That's the problem. Oh, okay? And we so, all true force. Right, right. <laughs> All right, even Hitler had E1B1A. <laughs> and there's a video in his mind. Check this out. Let, let's see if I can pull that up. Right, let me put in YouTube because we got to get that on here too. This is a parody, all right? Uh, let's see here. Still 
Right. Um, let me uh, go back and go out of share. And then I can select select items. And I want to select uh, Hitler on the desktop joint and um, make those changes. And um, can everybody see the screen now? Can everybody see? Yes. All right, this is... Make sure you read what's going on. The Feind operated from the north of the country between Gronau and Pankow. Und im Osten ist der Feind mit der Linie Lichtenberg, Marzdorf, Kautz, Haus genannt. Mit dem Angriff scheint es, wie das alles in Ordnung kommt. Mein Führer, Steiner, Steiner konnte nicht genügend Kräfte für einen Angriff passieren. Der Angriff Steiner ist nicht erfolgt. Es bleibt im Raum, Teitel, Jorge, Krebs und Porto. Hey, this, this is not it. Let me um, find the one, because they make a mockery of it now. Once the band us promoting <coughs> AR-15, just hand it. Hello, everyone. We're in the home stretch of our crowdfunding campaign for 16 days in Berlin, and we're so thankful to those of you who have helped us reach our initial goal, and we're super excited to start production. Together, we can make the biggest ever crowdfunded history documentary. And to thank you for the support so far, we came up with something special. Here's our historical breakdown of the famous scene from the movie Downfall, because so many of you have commented about it so far. Now remember, Downfall is an artistic interpretation, so not everything about the scene is totally accurate, and it condenses different historical events together and leaves others out. It's late April, and the Red Army is at or already within the city limits of Berlin. We're in the Reich Chancellery bunker in Berlin's Wilhelmstrasse, and that means there is less than 40 kilometers between the Red Army and Hitler's headquarters. This is the fight to the front and right of formation to the Generalleutnant der Waffen SS Hermann Fegelein enters the packed planning room. He was the brother in law of Hitler's soon to be wife Eva Braun and a devoted Nazi. Im Süden hat er sich nach Sossen genommen und stößt auf Stahnsdorf vor. On the map we can see that the Soviets have already surrounded the city on three sides. Their armored spearheads are racing to close the ring and cut off any chance of reinforcement from the outside. The last few reinforcements for Berlin are about to arrive from the northwest. They are members of the 33rd Waffengrenadier Division der SS Charlemagne and are mainly French soldiers fighting for the Germans. The Feind operates just on the northern Stadtrand between Frohnau and Pankow, and the Osten is the Feind to the line Lichtenberg, Marzdorf, Kautzhaust gelangt. The man explaining the Soviet advance on the map is General Leutnant Hans Krebs, Chief of the Army General Staff. He would play a key role in the fighting to come. With the Angriff Steiners. Hitler responds to the threat by saying that Button SS General Felix Steiner will counterattack, relieve the city, and turn the tide of the war. Hitler is portrayed here as still being in control, giving orders and drawing lines on battle maps. But Steiner's third Germanic SS Panzerkorps and the other understrength units that comprise the Armee Gruppe Steiner only properly existed on paper. Com All right, this is an It's on here because I've seen it, and for some reason I can't find it. Oh, let me see. Let me see. Nah. to find it um, again. Oh, uh, boy. 
Um, let me see. Um, if someone has some questions, y'all can ask when I'm trying to find this. I was listening to your uh, to, to the uh, tape you had uh, uh, talking about the Battle of Berlin. Uh, the Hitler was going to send some troops uh, to turn the tide. I said, that man had didn't have the reality of what was going on, did he? <laughs> he was going to do what, brother? Hell, say that again. I said, Hitler was going to send some SS troops. But if this is general, and they maybe they're gonna uh, turn the tide of the war, you know, in their favor. Right. And have, then he didn't have no reality, no kind of reality. <laughs> right, man. right. Uh, he out of touch, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, you said that Hitler had some kind of uh, general, uh, some, general, uh, some kind of a uh, bloodline or something, or. Yeah, uh, he had the bloodline of E one B one A, but not just him. Several um, Nelson Mandela, the origin center of the University of Witwatersrand, and tested the DNA of of um, Nelson Mandela, who lived from nineteen eighteen to twenty nineteen. I mean twenty thirteen. The famous South African anti-apartheid revolutionary politician and philanthropist was served as president of South Africa from 1994 to 1999 and determined that he belonged to a haplogroup E1B1A, the same exact haplogroup as myself and Ramesses the Third. Mm. Mm. So did Adolf Hitler. <laughs> what did he know? Well, yeah, these, these are the names, brother. I'll check this out. Ramesses III, Nelson Mandela, Desmond Tutu, Adolf Hitler, <clears throat> Lyndon B. Johnson, David um, Attenborough, Richard Attenborough, Orville Wright, Wilbur Wright, these are the ones who did the airplanes, Albert Einstein, mm. William Harvey, and Napoleon Bonaparte. <laughs> You say Mary Cuomo? No. No, no. Check out we got the last name. Napoleon oh. Bonaparte. Huh. You know who Napoleon is. <laughs> oh. So they have the same exact haplogroup. Okay. Uh -oh. So uh oh. <laughs> oh, um, so that's what we're showing y'all um, I'm going to end class is there any questions about anything that we're going over today no, I would just uh, <clears throat> I, I just finished those two book uh, two uh, volumes by Chavez L. Bay right right very good very good, very good. outstanding yeah. mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Well, right. I mean, uh, uh, they had a Phoenix Moon last night on, on YouTube. She was talking about the, uh, the oldest uh, cranial uh, uh, was two million, two hundred million years ago, or something like that. The oldest? I don't. I don't, I don't know how true that is. Well, hold on, say again, brother. What she said? She's talking about two hundred million years ago. <clears throat> of a, oh, one of the oldest cranial. Uh, Cranials? That's what she said. What type of bus? She she mentioned she mentioned a name. The name was with a with a B. Mm. Bernie, Bernie, Bernie. But do me go back and watch it again and write it down, brother L. And that way, um, let's go research and verify that. Okay. Okay. You know, because I would love that. Um, I'm always adding information, 
into the lesson so that we can continue tying this information together. So if she if she doesn't say she don't somebody don't found the a cranial or a bus or whatever it is from two hundred million years ago, then let's get that documented. Right. So she's uh oh yeah, she said she's federally recognized, so that told me also, oh <laughs> You said she's what? Federally recognized. Federally recognized, yeah. Okay, well that's beautiful. I'm glad she getting her monthly check. <laughs> <laughs> To get the check, Aline? Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, monthly check. Yeah. yeah was, what happens when you the, uh, they got to pay you this, they, um, to shut the hell up about the truth. <laughs> <laughs> well, she ain't got no business saying that then. Right. Yeah, that was a little too much. <laughs> wow. So, but, um, so. If you watch it again, brother, uh, just just write it down. I'm and, watch it again. Yeah, we can take a look at it and see what she's talking about here. Uh huh. So, some Sinetta was given. Uh, given. Uh, okay. Oh, she was on Sinetta. Yeah, Sinetta. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. It was mm-hmm. between her and Doctor Reggie. Oh, and okay. Rosborn, Ros, Ros, whatever the name is, Rosborn. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. And clowns. Mm-hmm. Them two clowns. Okay. I've never seen her really debate uh, any more, though. Right, right. Outside of the Moore Science Temple, that is. Mm-hmm. Well, they didn't want to go outside because, shit, I'm the one who brought it from outside the temple. Who's <laughs> 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 driving it on with the debate between me and Seti? That's what popularized this Native American information. When I was dropping it, it uh, on the people... Um, at that time period, nobody else was dropping that information um, on that large of a venue from Sign Letters um, TV or anywhere else. No, nobody. You know, Not nobody else but 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 us. Yeah. So, you know, that's 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 how we popularized it. So all these niggas out here talking about they Native American this, they indigenous that. They didn't know none of that until we did that video. Now all of a sudden they um, act like they know something. But it was from our video in 2009, that debate with me and Seti, in which that sparked this whole conscious movement of these dang calories and everyone else. Mm-hmm. Many of these people who existed before 2009, go back and check. They weren't around. Right, they wasn't even around. They wasn't even thought of. They didn't even have a thought in their head concerning indigenous aboriginal matters or anything else. No dang Calloway, no dang, no, no, no. Oh, uh, 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 Carrie. Right. No, no, Langley. None of them. None None of them. Right. Not even Taj was um, on the scene popularized at that time. Taj wasn't out like that. Not like that, no. Mm mm. Not in 2009. Not like that, anyway. Later on, you know, Taj became um, headliner type of thing, and um, we had. Um, um, Seti upset because um, during that time period, uh, the Moors were selling more than the Pan-African um, information. That's what made him come out allegedly out the real work. <laughs> so that was that was really Hakeem Bay, myself, C. Freeman L. You know, no, that was us who was selling more. Because I was Sarnetta's largest seller at that time period. There's nobody mm-hmm. else, else selling. And we can call and ask Sarnetta right now, who is the largest um, um, VHS seller and CD seller in 2009. And he'll tell you that, oh, that was Arlene. Arlene, shit, for like 10 years strong, Arlene was number one um, seller. So that means I was so Bobby, I was so Phil, I was so Taj, I was everybody. My video. Mm-hmm. My video did that. So, you know, so I never would tell you that. So we know that that came um, because of the jealousy of the Moors because of the popularity that we was getting containing the information, concerning the information. And that's the sad part, you know. That is the sad part. You know, just because the information out, they get upset because um, 
the Afrocentric movement wasn't moving as many um, VHS and, and um, um, D CDs and DVDs as they once did. You know, so, you know, that, 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 that was the craziness of it, but still, we still remain, we still here. You know, that was um, 11 years ago, 12 years ago now, shit. Uh -huh. You know, 11 and 12 years ago, going on, you know. Um, and we still here from 2009. And hell, I was teaching in 2005, um, two, actually 2004, when I first um, began um, teaching in New York. Before that, from 1997 to 1998, I was teaching in Atlanta, Georgia. So there's people who have my videos from 1997, 1998 in Atlanta, Georgia. 2004 is when um, New York learned about me on a grand scale. But I'm pretty sure some people had my tapes in New York by that time from Atlanta, Georgia, from 1997 to 1998. You know, so we've been at this for a long time and still going. Long time, yeah. Yeah. I'm about we can, 20 years. Yeah, yeah, 97, and here it is 2002. Mm. You know, as far as on VHS tapes, I was teaching 10 years before that. <laughs> <laughs> 1988, I started teaching in front of people. You know, but it wasn't until... Um, the mid '90s to the late '90s that we started getting it on videotape. Before that, I was just thinking. Oh, another thing, uh, somebody asked them about the the Omex, and they said, "What about the Omex?" Said, yeah, what about them? You know. So they said, "Well, uh, <clears throat> uh, what about the, uh, the Omex uh, was a forerunners of our ancestors here in the Americas, wasn't they? You know." And they said, no, you know, they, they like, they like, no, no, they, I don't well, know. Who was it? Africa. It, it, was, it wasn't, it wasn't them. Who was it? That's what I'm saying. Right. That was, that was Phoenix Moon was saying. Mm. Talking about they went, uh, one, uh, one of the old sculpture heads over there in Africa. Well, I just proved that wrong because I showed the pictures. I know they had some old mix over there in Africa. Well, that's why I showed the pictures, Brother Al. When right. you go back and watch this, I'm going to upload this. When you go back and watch it, you'll see the heads in Africa. Okay. <clears throat> so that clean that shit, what she was saying then. Hmm? Well, other than talk about opinion. Notice they will never show it. Mm -hmm. I'm one of the few that shows the information because they think that they're just simply Native American and that's a lie. Right. There's no 100% no Native American. That's what she's saying. Right. Originated here in America. Right. There's no 100% Native American. I even show people the Native Americans and we stand all the Native Americans in hell. Even they got 22% or more African um, um, in them. <laughs> right. I showed this already. You know? In fact, let's show it again. To clean out, to clear any any problems before we go. The problem is, is that they're just going off of interpretation, and they ain't done no real research, no DNA tests, no nothing, just saying all types of nonsense to confuse the people, and that's really what the problem is. They don't know how to tell this information back in to prove that. Uh, as 
as was told to us by the general Khalil Muhammad. He stated specifically that, do you want to claim a spy or the whole thing? Right. I'm here to claim, I'm here to reclaim the whole thing. Not just Africa, not just America. I'm here to claim the whole goddamn thing. That's Europe, Australia, <laughs> Pacific Islands, Caribbean, right. North, Central, South America. The whole goddamn thing. Because all of it is in our DNA. Okay, all of it is in our DNA, y'all. So yep. these guys talking about they just Native American, they lying. <laughs> Do a DNA test on their asses and you see um, how much they got of this and how much they got of that. They're not just Native American. Sorry. Uh-huh. Ain't nobody on this planet just made up anything. Exactly. No one want to know the truth about it. Right, that's the truth of the matter. And I showed how we um, are at least 40% Native American. At least I showed through my own bloodline and, and showed how we can tally up the numbers and verify that information. To everybody, Europeans, Asians, you know, um, Koreans, Chinese, whatever. Right. Hell, even they not on one percent Chinese. <laughs> they're gonna have Mongolian. They have Mongoloid or Mongolian in them. They're gonna have um, Korean or Japanese. You know what I'm saying? Right. You know, even uh, uh, a large part of them is gonna have that by now. You know, because they then spread it out beyond China. Negroes just didn't stay in America. Negroes just didn't stay in Africa. As shown, we spread it out. We spread it out. So these Negroes who's teaching all of this are delusional. They're narcissistic. They're liars. They don't talk about half a group or a one. They don't talk about none of this information. <laughs> and I showed this before with the young brother who um, hit me up. Okay, um, here he is, Brother Akaku. Akaku, that's Brother Hill, that's the brother right there. You'll see him, and he tells you right here, I have haplotype A, and it comes from the Middle East of Africa, 275,000 years ago. Uh-huh. Wow. Then he tells you that he has haplotype L, which dates back to 180,000 years ago. And where does it come from? East Africa. Mm-hmm. So, here you have a Native American who's verifying that he has African and how much he has 22%, 21 to 22% African in him. And he ain't got no problem saying, he said, on Genome Leak, I have 22% African. Because they mix with us so heavily. Right. So here he is. So Can you tell that he has twenty two percent African? I think we mix him a bit. We mix him be Asian so much that right. the most probably the most uh mixed nation of people on the planet. Yep. Well, here he is. He has twenty two percent African, twenty one to twenty two percent African in him. 
verify by GenoLink. And he even sends me the photo of it. And here it is, your global ancestry. West African, 21%. Balkan, 24%. So he's more Balkan than he is West African, which is almost close enough. And Native, hell, he's more than, uh, more than Native people of Andes, 12%. Native mm -hmm. people of Amazon and Caribbean, 10%. Japanese, Korean, 9%. Chinese, or China, 6%. West Asian, 4%. So, the way that he looks, he's more Balkan, which is 24%. Where's the Balkans located at? Let's see. Let's, let's see. Because people don't know how to do... This studies research. Balkan, also known as the Balkan Peninsula, is a geographical area in southeast where? Europe. Uh huh. 24% Europe. Balkan. 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 Not Spokane. As in Spokane, okay? <laughs> but Balkan. Okay? In Europe. Here it is. Here it is. Balkan. Where's that? What is that? That's Greece, above Greece, in Bulgaria. Okay? That's where that is. Croatia. You see that? That's Balkan. That's it. Okay? Stop the madness. So, he is 24% slash Greek. <laughs> But hell, they don't talk about the Greeks coming over here in the Americas? Have you heard that in your history books? <laughs> How do you get to be more percentage than anything else? But yeah, he's still considered Cree. C-R-E-E. -E. He's still considered Cree. But yeah, he got Greek. Mm -hmm. Balkan. 24%. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Next is the West African, 21%. So he's more African than he is Native people of Andes, which is only 12%. He's more West African than he is of Native people of Amazon and Caribbean, which is only 10%. He's more West African than he is of Japanese and Korean, which is 9%. He's more West African than China, Chinese, which is only 6%. God damn. Oh. So he should be called African American, shouldn't he? Should be. Mm, okay. Okay. Do y'all get this shit? When you said we yeah. was uh, we were broke six hundred thousand years broke time no, whatever. Or Greek African. You should be uh, Greek African, shouldn't he? Not Native American. Yeah, that's what he should be. He should be Greek African. That, that's what that's what he says. But see, his haplogroup group is um, um, Y is A, as I showed you, come from out of Africa, and then his haplogroup group um, maternally is L, which comes from out of Africa. So you have two haplogroups groups that come from out of Africa, but yet he's bulking twenty four percent. Hmm. Okay. Here he is once again. Look at him. Somebody speak to me, damn it. Somebody speak. <laughs> give, me some, give me some damn conclusions here. Shut a lot of those just aborigines down, or the indigenous, whoever, black Indians, whatever they want to call themselves, American Indian. It's funny because I've been watching that, brother. He's connecting the science, connecting the um, so-called native indigenous to the Hebrew Israelites. Yeah. Trying to say we all that, you know. Mm -hmm. That's the point. Something they just 
And they just think the one of the Hebrew Israelites just think they just Hebrew Israelites and that's it. No. More than that. Exactly. But he is considered Cree. But here, Mahankan, Makaku, Mahankan, from the Cree tribe. The Cree tribe, or the Greek tribe. <laughs> okay. Let's show that. Was then the Kennewick man, Washington State, and ancient ancestors of tribes with the Salish, Cree, and Sioux nations. So the Kenne the Kennewick man is the progenitor Y DNA of the Cree. Okay, and he's X. Chromosome, um, X chromosome or X um, haplogroup. Well, I got X haplogroup too. 0 0.83, so almost 1%. So when you look at it, and we said the The Kennewick man, and we look up the Kennewick man, and this is what I was talking about earlier, and this is the last for the um, class. Yes, let's, let's see it. The Kennewick man, let me see if I can find it. The Kennewick man. Let's see if we can find a Kennewick man. Kennewick man. All right. So here, get the book. Why a spectacular new find is changing our understanding of the people in of America. Ancient encounters. Kennewick man. And the First Americans by James C. Chatters. So we find that. Then we find out, uh oh, within our DNA, we have, here it is, Kennewick Man. Bam. Here it is, Kennewick Man, or Kennewick, United States, 8,300 8, years ago. Here it is. KY means thousand years ago. So 8.3 KY means that a person lived 8,300 years ago. So who was that? The Kennewick man, United States. That is in my DNA. And most of you also have that same connection. We already proved that we have the COVID. Man, now we also proved that proven that we have the Kennewick man, which is who the beginning of the Cree, the people of the Cree, right? The same people of the Cree. So we have. So that means in the line, he's my distant cousin, Akaku. And my distant cousin. Of course, he is from the Kennewick man. I'm from the Kennewick man. And most of you are from the Kennewick man. 
for those that have their ancestry here in the Americas. Right here. If you go to the Haplo group, let's look at the one. All right, it's shown right here in the Haprapa World Admixture portion. It's shown in the point, um, the now K10 ancient admixture proportions is found in the Euro genes K13 admixture portions and is in the NDLP K11 moderate admixture portion proportions. All right. This all demonstrates connection to the Covis man in Montana dating back 12,500 B.C., which is 14.5, all right, thousand years ago. And the Kinnewick man dating back to 8,300 years ago. Okay. Well, to ten thousand point three hundred years ago, before the last ice age, after the last ice age. That's a lot of history. And it's right here in our DNA. This is why it's important to get it done, because it verifies that you are indigenous. And none of these Negroes or European the Albions or 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 um five dollar Indians or Native Americans can state otherwise that you're not indigenous. When it's in your DNA. It's in your DNA. It's in my DNA. So I know it's in your DNA. Yep. I just use mine as verification. To demonstrate that we are. So when we say that we're Washington, and we see the Kinnewick man, we see seventy percent Lumbee, we see uh, um, the the last names of my family tribes as being Choctaw, Creek, Seminole, Cherokee, and then the Weir, Chickasaw. Things start beginning it start to make sense. That you are who you state you are and you have a right to be proud about it. They can't lie to you, state that you're not Native American when you have all this ancestry proof stating otherwise. That's the key. Okay. So um A Hi Tay Washington East to everyone. And how to watch the East, Dr. Eileen. You know, all right. We'll see everybody here next week. Peace. Peace. You have to watch the East. Peace. You have to watch the East.